Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Vaughn and I am here today with Austin and Lindsay Adamack and they are here to talk to us about their brand new album that came out this past year, Sound of the House. It's a live album. It is so good. Can't wait for everyone to hear it. Hi guys, how are you? We're good. Hey. We're excited to talk to you a little bit about it. Oh, well, CCM is very glad that you're here to talk to us as well. I would love to hear what you guys have been doing throughout 2020 and what you hope to do for 2021. Yeah, we um, we felt kind of called to start having meetings in our home. You know, we we're still a part of you know big church worship um, scenarios, and we're from Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, it's it was going and everything you know was going perfectly flawless. You know, at the beginning of 2020, nobody thought anything, but we felt this call to uh, start hosting these meetings and actually record what was happening in our home as we just started lifting up the name of Jesus. It's like, we kind of, we kind of were pushed to the background and everybody's voices just started like literally lifting the roof off of our home. Mm -hmm. And we thought, man, what would happen if we started miking up our house and the people mm -hmm. and the people and just opening our front door. And, you know, before COVID hit on uh, February 9th, we just like, packed out our house with our close friends and family and non-professional musicians and singers mm -hmm. and honestly just hit the red button and recorded songs that God had laid on our heart and that we had been playing in these like monthly meetings that we were having. And it was just incredible. These meetings have like been like a shot of vitamin B to our souls. You know, every time we meet up, it's like we, you don't want to leave. We all eat together beforehand. It's, it just feels like, it feels like that first century church mentality where there's, there's no limits. There's no outline of where it's supposed mm -hmm. to go. We just kind of let God take control and we sing together. We talk, we, it's just a great time. And so when these songs uh, were birthed and then started uh, finding their outlet in a home, it was a totally different, it was a totally different sound. It was something that I believe God was allowing us to usher in this new season of what it would look like to open up the walls of the, you know, whether it's the darkest rooms of our lives or the places that we've held off and held away from the Lord for so long. It was like God was allowing the church to be birthed again in our first ministry, our home mm -hmm. and uh, in our families. And it was just a really powerful outlet for us that we don't know what's happening. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what tomorrow looks like, but we know what's so powerful when you come together as friends and family and you worship together. And uh, so we hope yeah. that that's awesome. Yeah. And to fast forward into this whole season of shutdown and COVID, we had no idea that we'd everyone would be forced to be in their homes and the label kind of looked at us and we had just finished um, recording the record and they were like, well, not a lot of projects make sense right now, but yours does. So we're going to go ahead and put it out. <laughs> and um, it's been really crazy how, I mean, time and time again, how much smarter God is than all of us. And right. the fact that like, yeah. he will give you a song that you feel like you were this big part of, and then you realize that it's prophetic into like what you're about to walk through. And um, it's, it's, these songs have been songs of deliverance for us, songs of hope for us, but also for our community. And to think about the night that we recorded it and then everything that transpired after it's, it's really brought so much hope and just like how alive and how active and how um, just the provision of God through yeah. music and worship and yeah time together yeah when, awesome. I, when i listen to the album i've listened to it several times now and you know, really wanting to get a feel for it and, and and who you were when you wrote it and i felt like these were just anthems for the heart and it mm -hmm. felt like one continuous worship service what was your writing process for it and also did you really just hit record and go or did you stop yeah. in between each song we, we did. We just, we hit record and go. Sorry, I'm answering your questions backwards. That's okay. It's <laughs> maybe because I'm dyslexic, maybe because I'm just weird. But um, yeah, we, we just hit the record button. The, the whole idea was to not doctor this thing up. And I'm not saying that that is bad. We, we listen to a lot of pop records where there's, you know. We did it forever. Great, yeah, we did it forever. And we love it. It's awesome. But we wanted this to be really everybody's singing in an authentic way because we'd always find ourselves and um, 
And you know, that would, that would happen in the studio too. Like the first time you sang it, it might not have been perfect, but all there the emotion, kind of emotion there yeah. was just real. It was so and real. for us, it was like, even, I don't, okay. So it's funny. Cause like so much of the vision came with the process of just doing house gatherings mm -hmm. and kind of figuring out what that sound is. Um, we really felt like the Lord was convicting us to record real people, their worship and genuine worship, whether it's an atheist or a bartender or a pastor in town or worship leaders or our families. Like we just felt the need to record people as the sound and the main focus of the record to be people desperately coming in, whether you've seen it before and you know what you want and you want more and you want to go deep, those deeper yeah. places in the presence of God, or you have no idea, but you're at the end of yourself. We all came into the room with an expectation and our desire was to capture and record that expectation of people like desperately pursuing Jesus or something more. And, um, as we were like recording and kind of putting together the record, the temptation was there for us to overcorrect our vocals, to go back and overdub everything and like to clean it up because we've always been in the studio. We've always done things yeah. that way. And I really feel like the Holy Spirit stopped us in our tracks. And we're like, if we're going to re record real raw worship and that's the focus to get real people who are not trained um, singing, then we need to also be raw and real. And for me, it was like stepping outside without a face of makeup on. It was like, all right, you're going to hear genuinely what our worship sounded, sounded like that night and we're not going to overcorrect it. And so we really laid off on like tuning or anything like that and just tried to be as authentic with the way that the night went. Um, but we didn't know what we were going to get. We were like, we may have to do another one of these nights. Who knows? But the Lord just came through that. for us. Yeah. It, yeah. And it yeah. very much sounds like a corporate worship album. You know, it doesn't sound like, oh, this person has lead and this person picked uh -huh. up lead here and there. It does feel like the presence of the Holy Spirit was in that throughout listening to the whole album. Yeah. We started writing the project, not knowing it was going to be a project, not knowing what was going to happen, but just started uh, gathering our thoughts and really were drawn to scriptures like Isaiah 55 where talks about that his word would not return void you know it would give seed to the sower it would not the that that water that fell to the earth would not return back up to the sky without accomplishing and bringing to fruition the things that it was set out to do yeah. and we felt the same way god's word wanted to be completed to that and as we started writing more um that turned into a song called you keep your word on the album mm -hmm. but as we started writing more into this uh this album and we were having these house meetings it's like the our friends are, are like Lindsay kind of opened up a can of worms talking about like atheists and stuff. It's like, why would they come to a house gathering at church? But it's crazy when you're at dinner and you start talking to somebody and you open up the idea that they can come to a place that's not under a steeple and it's not, not mm -hmm. some religious clout mm -hmm. behind it or some sacred space. And, you know, per se, come to my home. Yeah. They're really open when you say, Hey, do you want to come to my house? It'll be a bunch of people over here just down the street. Yeah. And, when that started happening, they started writing the songs. We had a friend and there's a, a, a song story of that we put out. We had to, we had to uh, like get a video of it because it was just so powerful, but it was the song story behind Can't Deny It. And it was of a couple um, who are dear friends to us. Mm -hmm. And he was a pretty staunch, like outspoken atheist that even family gatherings, like he was always just, he was always a nice guy, but always ready to tell us why we were crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, he just had an encounter with the Lord and a crazy encounter with the Lord. You have to watch the video to see it, but it's about the song. And he literally said the words to me before he showed up at a meeting after we had been praying with his wife for a long time yeah. because he had left the family. It was this crazy ordeal. We had no clue. And we start praying with her and he shows up at the meeting and long story short, he just, he tells me this meeting. I, I literally fell to my knees in a hotel room um, away from town and just like was saying, I, I can't deny it anymore. Like I can't deny his presence anymore. Yeah. And it was like the songs started being birthed out of that. And we started writing, you know, I can't deny it. This love that's coming after me. I've tasted and tried it. I'm not going to fight it. This love that's coming after me. Mm -hmm. And it was like, God just sovereignly started writing these songs. Like you were saying, like anthems of the heart, not just an anthems for this like large group of people, but what happens when we're all looking at each other and it's not just a sea of people, but you can see individual faces. What would happen if our worship started being so, um, 
tangible and, and real. And it was like, we were living that out, not just when we went to church on a Sunday, but church started being born in our homes Mm -hmm. and, and wherever in warehouses and wherever we meet up that it was like, there was no boundary anymore um, between what, you know, is just some sacred space, but we carry that, you know, we know that Colossians talks about that Christ in us, the hope of glory. And that was, it all kind of started making sense. I'm not trying to start that's preaching, what, but that's what we mean by like God is just so much smarter than us than us. I feel like we could we could lay out this thing and be like, this was our grand plan from the beginning. We had this master idea, but really it's just like piece by piece and just living life together and trying to be obedient with the conviction that God was giving us locally for our home, yeah. for our community. And what we wanted more of, the Lord started providing music. The Lord started providing stories and inspiration and opportunity. And um, yeah, I mean, overall, I feel like the sound of the house is really just people genuinely pursuing Jesus. And we tried our best to capture that. What do you want the listener to take away when they sit down and listen start to finish? You know, there's a... um, there's a story in second Kings chapter four, where it talks about the woman with the olive oil jars. I think that's like what the editors decide to call that section of scripture. Um, but it's basically where a woman loses her husband and the debtors and stuff are about to come after her and her sons for the money, because now I guess her husband can't provide and all the stuff and they owe a bunch of money. And she starts crying out to this prophet Elisha saying, Hey, like, help me. What am I going to do? They're coming after me, all this stuff. And Elisha says, what do you have? And I feel like, I feel like we hear that, especially like millennial culture and all that kind of stuff in it. Like it's a source of competition. It's a source of like when we're scrolling for a pastor friend say like it's hell in our pocket, our phones, you know, like we're just scrolling all the time. And this is this comparison game all the time. And so, so when we hear somebody say, what do you have? Well, we immediately compare, we think that it's like, they're shaming us. Well, well I, I don't, I don't have anything. And clearly this is what the woman thought of in second Kings chapter four. She was like, I don't have anything. I, you, you, you can almost hear the attitude she has. She's like, I don't have anything. I, I, I just have an olive oil. I have some olive oil jars, you know? And he says, um, and if you know this story, he basically just says, Hey, go around to all your neighbors and friends and ask them for their jars. And she literally poured out her only olive oil jar into these other jars. And it just never stopped pouring in her house until all the jars that she had collected were filled. And she was able to sell those off and make the money to pay off the creditors. And it was this crazy story. And what I want listeners, and I know Lindsay's heart, the same thing is that God will fill whatever we give him. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you want to give him your, just your Sundays, he's going to fill it. He's a good God. Mm-hmm. If you want, if you, if you give him your family, he's going to fill it. If you give him your house, if you give him your workplace, you know, we've been even meeting with COVID trying to distance. We've been meeting in an uh, upstairs Harley wear shop, a uh, where, where shop, where, <laughs> where warehouse, shop. where shop, a warehouse, like a, a you know, yeah. a, a shop upstairs. So we can spread out and do the COVID thing. Yeah. And it was like, God is meeting us there and that's gotten out of control. So we had to like move to a, a bigger spot. And then we're also thinking of ways now to into different homes. And now other people in Jack's are picking this up. We don't want to hold the rights on this. The, the beautiful yeah. thing is that God is going to fill it. Yeah. And that is our prayer is that you would open up your house, open up your life. Whatever you have. Yeah. And know yeah. that like God is good. Like what you have is enough that your worship matters and if you give him your yes every single time, yeah. that he's going to come through in crazy ways that you didn't think you um, would ever be worthy enough to sign up for. Like, just give God your yes. Give him everything. What you have mm-hmm. is enough. And he's going to fill it. And there's going to be an overflow. And yeah. that's how communities change. That's how families change. And um, we're seeing that firsthand. Yeah. Austin and Lindsay, as we wrap up this interview, is there a message of hope that you would like to leave for our viewers? Yeah, I just say that nothing takes God by surprise, really doesn't. You know, we have we have a hope in him forevermore. And that is an assurance Mm -hmm. that can never be taken away from us, no matter what we were born into, to no matter what, like, golly, you know, generational curse per se that we feel like we've had to carry on our backs Mm -hmm. that we've had to walk through 
there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And I know that verse is utilized so much, but I believe as we continue to give God every area of our life and we start opening up those dark rooms we're seeing that culturally on a big scale right now we've seen how like a lot of the you know the curtain is being pulled back you know we're, we're seeing it oh there's a lot of things we swept under the rug for years and years and years and i i believe that we don't have to fear the fallout because uh lindsay has always said this and she actually kind of said this prophetically in a meeting that wherever there's a fallout like that there's going to be a mighty rebirth in the lord when and obedient. yeah and I think if, if you're obedient too, and you listen and may, maybe it's not music, maybe it's hosting. We've had some incredible people that just love to cook and love to, you know, just do awesome things for people who come over and, and it's turned out into a really powerful evening that we had no clue. It wasn't even like really purposeful. We, you know, you might not be able to speak. You don't have to worry about that. Like mm-hmm. we're deconstructing the ways that it looked like at those gatherings in those first century, you know, church gatherings it was just, we're coming together. So my heart is that you would run with that, run with what God's doing, allow him to fill every area of your life and open up those dark rooms of your life and let him take over because there's going to be a mighty rebirth. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Yes, absolutely. Well, Austin and Lindsay, thank you so much for stopping by and everybody, please go and listen to their newest album, The Sounds of the House. It is absolutely beautiful and you will not be disappointed. And guys, I can't wait to see what's next for you. Oh, thanks so much. much. Welcome. Cheers.